People are afraid of hip replacements, naturally. But modern hip replacements allow people to return to normal life, normal function. I want to show you how we achieve that. Welcome to the Matilda International Hospital Operating Theatres. We have a number of bearing materials, metal, ceramic, and ceramicized metal, and ceramic and polyethylene acetabular components. In particular, this combination of an oxidized zirconium, that is a, a metal with a, with a layer of ceramic on the top, femoral head, together with a cross-linked polyethylene socket component. This is the best performing cementless total hip replacement in the National Joint Register for England and Wales. And this bearing combination is the best performing in the Australian Joint Registry. What does that mean? These hips are lasting, they're not failing, and we genuinely hope that they will last for life. But what about function? Obviously, every patient wants their hip replacement to last for life, but they also want it to work properly. So how do we get these to work properly? Well, we try to reproduce the patient's normal anatomy. So, for example, we have two different types of femoral stem. This Smith & Nephew Polar stem is the standard stem that we use for the vast majority of patients. It works extremely well. But for patients whose hips did not form normally, mostly young women, this Zimmer Wagner cone stem allows us to position it in any position we want. And of course, we want to put it in the correct position for the patient, which is a different position from her original bone. So we have a whole range of sizes of the implants. Here I am testing the fit of this acetabular cup and 54 millimeters is the correct size for this particular patient model. There's a 54 millimeter definitive cup and we need to position that exactly in the correct anatomical position. So I have some simple devices to help me with this. An aerial and a very simple but accurate inclinometer, which is a form of spirit level. So I'm thus able to position that metal cup in the patient's pelvis very precisely. And then I can put one of my trial liners into it and that's the pelvic side ready for testing. Femur or thigh bone we have a large range of sizes. There's the smallest for a patient about five feet or less and there's the biggest for a patient who would be much over six feet. Once we've positioned this femoral trial in the patient's thigh bone, we can attach a trial femoral head. And as you can see, we have a whole range of them. And test the range of motion and stability to check it doesn't dislocate and that the patient's leg is the correct length. At this point, we take an X-ray during the operation. X-ray allows us to check the size and the position of the implants is as intended. So once we're happy with the trial implants, we can take out the trial implants and replace them with the definitive implants. So we remove the trial 
component. Place the definitive component recheck the range of motion and stability and the total hip replacement is in place. Finally, we stitch the tendons back to the bone, stitch the incision closed, apply a waterproof dressing and the patient will be awake about 10 minutes for it later and usually walking the same day or the very next morning. So there it is.